Welcome to these Nuts Garage, and today we're going to be talking about our new 2022 Ford F-150 XLT from the beautiful state and city of Billings, Montana. Like I said in the intro, what we're going to be doing today is we're going to be taking a look at this 2022 Ford F-150 XLT. Now this is a four-wheel drive truck and it is a Super Crew which has the four full-size doors on it. And uh, the color that it is, is anti-matter blue, which to me I call it bass boat blue because in the bright sun like right now, uh, maybe here in a minute I'll get the camera closer, but it is a blue that has a lot of sparkles to it. Uh, kind of to me looks like a bass boat, you know, how they have all the paint that really shines uh, when this truck is in an overcast situation it almost looks black so it's kind of got this two-tone action going on with the paint color uh, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna walk around the truck I'm probably gonna set the camera up on one side of the truck and I'm gonna show you the outside of the truck and what modifications I've already done to this truck since we've owned this truck for about three months now and and the the modifications we're gonna do in the future. Now, I'm just gonna start out with the front. Now with the front of the truck, we just added our Tennessee license plate on it, which is, um, you know, re you know, representing Tennessee and all. Uh, I do have a bug guard that sticks to the hood right here, um, but it physically actually attaches to the hood and I'm not really too keen on that idea. When I ordered it, I actually thought it went up underneath the hood right here it kind of rolled back over the front of the truck um, and it didn't really uh, attach to the hood other than from the underside. So I haven't made up my mind yet whether I want to put that on or I want to order a, um, another uh, bug guard for the front. All right, so let's start on this uh, driver's side of the truck. Now, right now, these are the factory 275-65R18s. Now, I like the factory wheels and I'm not wanting to spend a ton of money on aftermarket rims and tires, but what I do want to do is get a little bit more aggressive uh, front tire or tires on the truck, which I'm wanting to go with like a 295, probably 70, 18, something like in that uh, ballpark there. So moving on back, um, got a car going by here. I did come in and add the vent visors for the truck. Now these kind of are low profile. They're, they don't go in the channel because I was told by the, the parts department and the maintenance department of the Ford dealership where I bought this truck. And that was Steve Marsh Ford in Milan, Tennessee. Give them a shout out. Maybe put a link to their website up here or something or over here, probably over here. Um, but they said it usually with the in channel, low profile, I guess vent visors, the windows have sensors so when they come up they if they hit any kind of resistance they'll automatically go back down so they said a lot of times those vent visors can cause problems so what i did is i just got the low profile ones that stick on to the outside of the window uh, not really done anything the running boards that these came on the truck from the factory um same thing with the rear wheels and tires just going to put new tires on the truck another thing that i will be doing in the future is I'm gonna probably get me some chrome caps to go over the mirrors right here. And then they do sell a chrome trim that runs all along through here that makes all this chrome. That way I have a chrome line here, down here, and then the door handles. You know, the truck's got chrome here. It should, it, it should have chrome here and here just to kind of be an accent. I don't think that'll do overdo it with the chrome, but that's gonna be something that we're gonna be doing in the future to the truck. Now, one thing, when we get to talking about wheels and tires, I haven't, like I said, I haven't made up my mind exactly on what tire size, but I know I'm gonna keep the factory uh, rims. But one thing about these trucks is they do have kind of a rake to them where the back end is higher than the front. So I will be doing, when I get my tires, I will be raising the front end up about two, two and a half inches to make the truck sit level. Now, what we'll do now is we'll jump around to the back of the truck. 
Alrighty, now we're at the back of the truck. Now, one thing that I did um, is I bought these chrome badges for the back. Uh, this is usually just indented. It says F-150. I kind of debated this for a few weeks about whether or not I wanted to put the chrome on the back. But like I said, it does have chrome here. Uh, the bumpers are chrome. So I was like, is it going to be too much? Maybe you think it's too much. Comment down below if you like the F-150 being in chrome or maybe you don't. Whatever. But I kind of, once I got it on here, it kind of grew on me. And I really like the... Um, of uh, the f-150 here in chrome now one thing about this truck it does have the keyless entry it also has your uh, pr proximity sensors that's why if i'm standing here you'll see these lights keep coming on it's because the truck is sensing me out here because i have the key uh, this truck does have the remote start power you know unlock and lock button i also can do control starting the truck and unlocking my doors stuff like that from my phone which has the Ford Pass on it but I'm just gonna pop the tailgate and there is a button here you can hit it does have that slow drop it has your uh, holes for C clamps if you're working on something sorry if the winds getting this microphone uh, it has this little workstation back here I'm probably not gonna something was screaming over there um, this you know, I'm probably not going to use it, but it does have all the different tape measure, the measuring and the place to set your phone and your pencils and whatever. Uh, one thing it has is the step on the tailgate. My wife actually likes this because if she needs to get in the back of the truck, she can step up in the back of the truck. And I actually like it too. I, I use this thing all the time when I'm trying to get in the back of this thing. So um, I'm just trying to crawl up in the back there. Never thought I would use that. Probably I thought it was a useless feature. And now that I have it, I use it all the time when I'm up here with the truck. Uh, another thing is I did go out and I ordered this. This is a Rough Country retractable Tanua cover. Um, it is, like I said, made by Rough Country. I installed this thing in roughly about 30 to 45 minutes then it was my first one. I, um, Rough Country has a video on how to install this. It's pretty simple to install. I, like I said, I did it by myself, so if I can do it, you can do it. But one thing about it, it has this strap, and I actually have it hooked to my, um, there's a, a tie-down loop on, this pack, on the driver's side. And then right here, underneath the Tanua cover, there's two little, I'll say, buttons. You pull them together, and it will retract. As simple as that. You don't have to get in and out of the truck to pull this thing. And I've had this on there about about four or five days now. We just got back from a big trip out to uh, the Teton Mountains, Yellowstone, uh, Cody, no, Jackson Hole, Wyoming. Then we went into Idaho. So we were doing a lot of camping, and we used this cover. Now, if you want to pull it to you, you just pull it like this until you hear it lock. And that's it. Now being that I have the bed, the Tanua cover back, you can see that also the bed has been sprayed with rhino linings and that come from uh, the rhino linings place in Jackson, Tennessee. Uh, I can't think of their name right off the top of my head, but I will put their link up here. Got another car rolling by staring at us. Um, also the truck has cargo lights in the bed um, it also has your I guess it's a, a 400 watt inverter in inside the truck and it does have a, a 110 plug back here in the bed of the truck it will not work a coffee pot maybe it works a lamp some sort of small appliance uh, I don't even know if it run a drill I think I'm gonna try that on another day see if it'll actually run a like a cordless drill but or you see I'm using a skill saw with this, but I'm not real for sure if that's even big enough to run a skill saw. So, like I said, maybe just a lamp. So that's pretty much the back of the truck. I did add a couple of decals on the back window there, and then I have a goat inside of there. I don't know if you can see that little fella. Um, but that's the back of the truck. What we'll do now is we'll move around on the passenger side of the truck. I think I only did one modification over there, and I should have showed you that at the beginning of the video, but we'll jump back over there, and I'll show you that modification.
Now the only modification that's different on the passenger side is this. And this is an Alpha Defense 50 caliber bullet antenna. Uh, from the factory, these trucks come with this really tall antenna. Uh, our Ford Edge doesn't even have a FM AM antenna. I don't know why the trucks have to have them, but uh, this is an Alpha Defense antenna. And what I'll do is I'll, if you wanna buy one, I'll put a link up somewhere if you wanna check that out. Um, I think these are about 30 bucks uh, shipped to you with it. You get a couple of the face masks. Now, what I'll do now is uh, we'll jump in inside the truck and I'll show you some of the features of inside the truck um, and what it has in there. All right, as we go in the driver door, you'll see that it does have the keypad on the outside of the truck and that's very handy for me. All right, as we open up the truck, you can see it does have power windows, power door locks, power mirrors. Uh, I don't think it has heated mirrors or nothing, but uh, as you can see the door here, let me zoom out a little bit. It does have pockets everywhere. I mean, literally, we we went on this trip past weekend and we had stuff everywhere. It still had more places to stick stuff. So you have a pocket here. Keep our little knife in there in case we need to start a fire. It's got a little fire starter on it. Uh, also, we have uh, pockets down here. You can put a drink there, here, the pot, a spot here and here. I mean, it's just literally covered up with places to put stuff. Now, it does have um, cloth seats. One maybe upgrade I will do in the fall. Right now, this truck is in, is in Montana. My wife's driving it. Uh, maybe this fall, what I'll do is I'll have cat skins put on the seat, which are leather seats. It'd be two-tone, stuff like that. That's probably the only really major modification I would do inside the truck. Now moving in here, it does have your powered seats. It also has another cubby hole down here for stuff. Over here, you have a little, this pops your tailgate. These are your spotlights on the mirrors. This does have that uh, 360 lighting. Uh, that's your cargo light, regular headlights. I think this is your, how bright you want your uh, dash lights up there. Pull your hood, emergency brake. I mean, this is your hood emergency brake there. Something that I just noticed today after having this truck three months, there's an American flag right there. And that reminds me, don't know if you'll be able to see it, but if you look down here, maybe you'll see it right there. That is an American flag that I did put some decals on the truck. I just kind of stuck them low. Just kind of be incognito. That right there raises your steering wheel up and down. Get inside the truck. I'm gonna start it up, maybe, so I don't shake the camera to death. It does have push button start. All right, and the screens go through all their little show. All right, so this one right here actually has a, a speedometer and an tachometer over here as a needle. Some of the lariats and the higher package trucks that's all like a screen and it's all just coming through the screen but it, you know basically your water temperature oil pressure turbo and your fuel uh, it also has will show your maps up on the screen your speed fuel economy it, it has a lot of stuff in it and I don't have time to go through it all but uh, you can see I'm trying to change some of it you can go down to menu, truck info, I mean, seat belt, off-road. You can just do a whole lot of different stuff on it. It does have your 10-speed transmission in it, and it does have the manual button. You're shifting. I never use that. Um, high beams, which they do have the automatic lights, windshield wiper over here, and then, of course, here's your basic steering wheel your basic stuff on it and then as you move over here you have your four wheel drive selector right here it doesn't have trailer brakes on it i will be adding trailer brakes to this truck uh soon but uh here's your four wheel drive two wheel drive things like that as you turn this knob it will show it up here on the screen your different settings so we're in normal so now you're in tow haul mode eco 
then you get into sport and if we move it the other way we go back to normal then we get into our four-wheel drive settings see it says okay like I said slippery deep snow and sand mud and rut so anytime you shut the truck off it will automatically default back to your normal rank your normal driving setting now as you move over here this is the sync 4 um, I'll call it radio infotainment center this is your backup your camera in the back I do wish this truck had a camera in the front but it doesn't hazards this is your traction control up here and basically you know you can move this screen over here you can flip them vice versa you can scroll through this screen for your zone lighting which will light up all the lights on the truck off-road your behavior your trip Bluetooth here down here you have your audio phone nav vehicle settings just a lot in it but it's not hard to na navigate what car Apple CarPlay Android Auto once you get used to it it's pretty simple to use it's just like anything else uh, a new truck all new features you have to just learn them uh, basically here's your radio settings I guess that right you hit that that makes the screen go black hit it turns it back on different sources sound forward play it doesn't have a CD player or nothing but uh, you can tune you know change your radio station channel your uh, power for your AC your um, air conditioning you have max defrost AC you know you can basically see here's your fan speed crank that up a little bit uh, down here you have another cubby hole you have a USB one of those little fancy uh, I guess it's a small USB I don't know what technically the name for that little one is if you know comment down below cup holders this I like because I can sit my phone down in there when I'm going down the road this right here holds um, good for throwing your wallet in or whatever and then when you move over here you have this little button and that pops open I keep some uh, little disinfectant rags in there napkins and a dusting cloth I think I even have a little flashlight in there glove box you know it holds your gloves if you have gloves to put in there uh, then you come over here you do have this cup holder here it's not like these where it has these little things but if you do want these to have those I think they said you can get these out of a 2020 model truck you can order that part out of a 2020 model and it'll actually have these little things there back here but these don't glove box or not glove box your console center console got a little tray to hold your stuff it also has another USB in here uh, it's got it's actually a really large uh, console you can get a vault a safe and put in there and I'm thinking about doing that too getting a, a safe so uh, you can lock away your important stuff so nobody can steal it now let's move around to the back of the truck and I'll show you the features back there alrighty so here's the rear door once again it has a little pocket here for something you can actually put a coke or something in there but if you hit a bump it's going to splatter all over the place uh, that looks like a good place for your kids to throw trash in but I don't my kids are grown so maybe they won't put trash back in there now here's another little pocket you can put something in another pocket for a drink pocket here for maybe whatever you want to put back there maybe you got kids they want to stick some books in there or something are you coming to the back of the seat got a pocket there uh, now this uh, did not come factory this is a little net that we put in here because my wife has two golden retrievers and this is to prevent them from coming forward in the truck while we're going down the road and when you look at the rear console you do have a 12 volt power point there you have vents back here to blow keep the back passengers cool we also have this uh, another USB uh, plugs there it's got a lot of uh, those in it then we have our 400 uh, volt or watt not volt 400 watt uh, power point 110 120 volt 400 watt max outlet 
There's also one right up there. Right there. In the front of the truck. Same thing as is back here. Uh, now I do have solid rubber floor liners that when I bought the truck they had to be ordered. They're in at this moment so I have to go pick those up and then when she comes back here in a, in a month or so back to Tennessee I'll go ahead and install them back in the truck. Here's the back seats. Uh, one thing I like about the back seats is they do just flip up and they're out of the way. You can reach across and do both of them. But if, if you want to pull them down because they lock in position up, you have there's a little thing right here you pull. And then only on the passenger side, if you pull this lever, this lets you back here to your jack, uh, your little fuel uh, funnel, and uh, basically that's it. Just push it back up, slam it up, and then there's that. Now this is the inverter that's running the back of the truck and all the 110 outlets or 120 volt outlets in the truck. This is the inverter. Like I said, I wished it was bigger, but it's not. But it, it is what it is. Uh, this is a, a, a rock that came from the factory. Uh, you can get these, so if somebody, uh, you know, tries to mess with your truck, you can uh, drop that on their toes. So make sure you, when you buy a new at Ford, you have your rock in there. That right there is an umbrella that we keep back in the back here. And that's kind of a nice little storage spot there that's underneath the seat to keep uh, miscellaneous tools in. But now this has the Lux box, and that's this right here. It folds flat down in the floor, and all you do is just hit this little switch here to unlock it. Got an unlock thing. This raises up, and then right down here, you'll see this lever. You just raise that up, and that locks that open. So now you got another storage spot, so when you drop your seat, it kind of, you know, keeps it kind of, because you uh, can't, and it actually does have a key right there. So you can lock this seat down, they lock these seats down. So like, let's say you were going on a big hunting trip or something, and you wanted to put your shotgun or your, your um, gear rifle in here, you could lay it in there, pull the seats down, and it would kind of lock in position to keep people from being able to get into this box, you know. Now, if it's a, you know, a thief, he's going to get into it no matter what. But that's another little divider that's in there. That's kind of nice. So if you uh, want to have two different storage compartments, you do. All it does, you push that in. If you want to drop it, push that down. It automatically does that side, and it shuts, and then you... Click that and it's locked in position. Now when I get my floor mats, they'll come in around and like this. They won't cover my Lux box. So I guess that's about all of the inside of the truck. We don't have a sunroof or nothing. It does have your basic cab lighting inside. It doesn't have the rocker switches, which I wish it did have, but it doesn't. Alrighty, for those of you that's been around the channel for a while, you already know that I name all of my vehicles. And for those of you who are new to the channel or you're just passing through uh, watching this video, now you know I name all of my vehicles. Now this truck's name is Bob. And how the truck got its name was me and my wife was riding around in the truck and we had our granddaughter in the back and we asked her, hey, what do you think we should name this truck? And her answer was Bob. So now there's a great movie called What About Bob? And that has Bill Murray in it. And I think uh, Dreyfus, I can't remember his first name. But, so if you ever hear us in a future video say, What About Bob? Or just Bob? You know I'm actually talking about this truck and not just some random person walking down the street. So, overall, I've had this truck about three months because I was working on my 98 X4 Expedition feel. I missed something and I blew that engine up in that truck. I do plan on fixing that truck later, maybe in the spring. I do plan on fixing up my 78 F350. When I get when I get my house finished, I'll get back to working on that. But overall, this truck is replacing fuel. This was supposed to be my back and forth to work truck. Now my wife travels for a living as as I do, but she's a travel tech for works in hospitals and whatnot. Now, when she was coming out here to, this is Billings, Montana, we have a Ford Edge Sport 
and that car is a little too small to carry all of your personal belongings and things that you're going to need to live for three months. Dog kennels also and dog food, things like that, and two golden retrievers. The car was just too small. So I was like, well, just take my new truck out there and just so that way you can put all your stuff in the bed, the dog's in the back, and you'll have plenty of room. And also, being that the truck is out here, it makes it a good vehicle to explore this part of the, the, the country because about three weeks ago I was up here and we did a trip where we left Billings, Montana, we went to Lovell, Wyoming, checked out Bighorn National Forest, or National, yeah, I guess it is National Forest. Then we went to um, Devil's Canyon and did uh, some kayaking trips there. And then we went to um, Mount Rushmore, uh, Hill, uh, I think it's Hill City, Wyoming, I think it's, oh, no, South Dakota. Did a train ride there. Then we went to Mount Rushmore, the Badlands, went to Deadwood, Spearfish, then up to Devil's Tower. So we did a whole big trip about three weeks ago. Well, then I've come up this past week, weekend, and we went to, we take this truck to Teton Mountains, Yellowstone, uh, Jackson Hole, Wyoming, Victor, Idaho, just kind of went across the border and back. So we went cap camping last weekend, so we threw all the camping gear in the back and we kind of went on some, I'm not going to say off-roading road, but you know, the truck is capable of doing some light off-roading because of the suspension that's on it. It's not made to do any rock crawling. But uh, it is the perfect vehicle to have out here in this side of the country for exploring all these national parks that are out here. So, so far I really do love this truck. Uh, it rides good, it's really quiet. It does have the <clears throat> 2.7 liter engine in it, which I wanted the 5.0, but for no more than what we're using this truck for, it works out perfect. It will haul up to like 7,700 pounds, and we are thinking about maybe getting a 16 foot cargo trailer and kind of making that into a, a camping trailer in a way. Uh, so that way we can take that when we go camping in the mountains or somewhere, uh, or if she's moving from one location to another, she can put all of her stuff in the trailer, and that way, you know, multiple uses out of that trailer. So that's basically going to be the end of this video. If you liked it, give it a big thumbs up, subscribe, comment, and share.